name is Ron. I'm going to do a couple tutorials on exporting a mesh from Mandelbulber. A uh, couple ways you can do it. Uh, export mesh, which is what I'm going to cover in this video, and then export voxels. A little more involved. I'll do that in another one. Um, so get your scene pretty straightforward. I'm going to use a the default Mandelbulb just because it's quick. I got a couple things open, a little laggy, so and keep things moving. Working at a lower resolution, first thing I'm going to do is bump the detail up a little bit to get it back to where it was. Now, this is important. Limit bounding box, because when you slice this up, or when Mandelbulb slices this up into the layers for the export, you don't need to be calculating all this empty volume for the resolution. So it's just a waste. This will be a blob. So bounding box to limit puts the bounding box right at the edges of the fractal. So the only wasted space would be down in like little voids and pockets. Negligible. Um, so you get that set. Now because this is a bulb, it's symmetrical. Again for speed, I'm only going to do half of this. If I wanted, I could in whatever software I'm using, duplicate the mesh. If I'm printing, print one half, print the other, put them together. Real easy. So moving the bottom left corner up to zero gives me half the mesh, as you can see. Ooh. All right, doesn't really matter where it's positioned for this. So now go up here, mesh export, uh, where you want to save it, just so I can always remember. Yes. Mesh one. Now you have to put the dot PLI if, oops, I don't want to go away. if you're going to be changing the name or the location. If you don't, it won't put anything automatically and you'll just get a data file. You can't do any of this. So save, polys, or PLYs there, polygon format. Binary ASCII, um, you can Google the difference. Uh, it's just how it's saved. One's compressed, one isn't. Binary's faster. So I leave that set there. Color, I usually add texture. In whatever software I'm using, Blender, Rhino, Moto, whatever. So I don't worry about it, but you can export the color. Um, Max Iter, somebody a little smarter about Mandelbulber can describe what that does. I don't really see an effect with anything I've done so far. So I leave that at 30. Resolution, I start at 100 for my first export so I can see where I'm at with the quality. And then I usually double that to two see how much that changed and then I can kind of make an educated guess on where to go next. I leave the custom limits off because I want to use my global limits which are these. Um, if I didn't set these you can set it here but it's easier to do it here. And then hit export. It's going to lag a second because I got a couple things running but once it fires, it's super quick. It's taking a minute. Did it get done? So, if it was done, that was real quick. Um, I usually check I didn't hit the button. All right, um, so export. There we go. There. Four and a half seconds. 207,000 polys. So a uh, quick check is to just go to the file you saved it. Make sure you have your previews on. And you see how small the file is. Loads pretty good. 
and it's like well, it's not bad, but yeah, not much detail. So now, bump it up a two. jumped up to over a million polys. So open this crap up. You see the file size jumped from 2000 to 11. But I got a lot more detail. So let's try four. Five million, not bad. I don't know if, if my previewer will do this. Eh, it might, 57. At this point, I might have to open it in Blender or Mesh at a, um, or Mesh Lab. Uh, that's kind of the fork in the road at this point. I haven't really found the need for cleaning in Mesh Lab. There's not a whole lot of, it's a good mesh. It's dense. Uh, so you can reduce it, but I'm not that fluent in Mesh Lab. So somebody else that's better in Mesh Lab could kind of take this and run with that in that direction. I usually do my reductions in Rhino, um, but I'll open it in Blender because almost everybody has it and it's free. So I'm happy with that quality for now. that now let's delete the infamous cube and import Stanford poly I uh, shouldn't take too long um, 400 megabytes seems to be the limit, at least for my rig and Blender. Anything that gets close to four or over, it just won't open. Um, two to 300 takes a minute or two. This, again, I've got a couple things running. is going to, might take a second. Uh, but it will open it. Oh, there we go. So... Not bad. Shade smooth. It's dense, so it's yeah, a million seven. There we go. A little better. So yeah, so I mean because I didn't Bring any colors in with it. Uh, let's see. You can add whatever. Yeah. We'll play with fingerprints. This part almost takes just as long as exporting the mesh. I could go even further without the resolution. It will jump quickly into an unmanageable file size. Um, I'm at 400. 500 would probably get me up into the uh, gig file size, you know, or a couple hundred megabytes. So uh, the bounding box helps a lot. And the mesh or the fractal. A huge fractal is obviously going to have more triangles and more stuff. So it would be bigger um, so like having and stuff like that if you can't see it in the scene 
kill it with your bounty box just to save resources and stuff. So that concludes um, number one, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.